Whenever benzene molecules are allowed to undergo electrophilic substitution reactions, what basically happens is one of the H atoms attached to one of the carbons on the benzene is replaced by some type of substituent. And that product is called a mono substituted benzene, basically a benzene in which one of the H atoms has been replaced with that substituent group. Now it turns out that monosubstituted benzenes can be further substituted through different types of reactions and these types of di-substituted benzenes is what we're going to discuss in this lecture. So let's suppose we have the following mono substituted benzene in which the H atom found on the first carbon has been replaced with this E1 substituent. So E1 basically represents some type of arbitrary substituent. It can be a hydroxy group, it can be a methoxy group, it can be a methyl group, an ethyl group, and so forth. Now, if we take the monosubstituted benzene and we mix it in with some type of electrophile, let's call it E2, to basically differentiate it from E1, we have three potential products that can be formed. Basically, the electrophile can attach itself to three different positions. So either position two, position three, or position four. Notice this position, the fifth carbon, is the same as this position, and this position, the sixth carbon, is the same as the second because of the symmetry of this mono-substituted benzene. So basically, if the electrophile attaches to the second carbon position we form, the one, two, substituted benzene and this position is known as the ortho position. So this product is sometimes called the ortho product. Now, if the electrophile attaches to the third carbon, this position is known as the meta position. And so this product, the 1,3 substituted product is known as the meta product. And finally, if the electrophile chooses to attach to the fourth position, the fourth carbon, we produce the 1,4 di substituted product. And this is also known as the para product. So the ortho position is the second carbon, the meta position is the third carbon, and the power position is the fourth carbon. Now the question is when is ortho formed, when is para formed, and when is uh, meta formed. So basically it turns out that ortho and para are formed together while meta is formed by itself. So under certain conditions, the ortho para substituted benzenes will predominate while under other conditions, the meta substituted benzene will predominate. So we see that ortho and para basically form together. Now the question is, what exactly determines whether the ortho para will form, will predominate, or the meta will form, the meta will predominate? And the answer lies in this group here. So it turns out that the initial substituent group of this mono substituted benzene is the thing that basically determines which product is formed, either the ortho para pair or the matter. And to see exactly what we mean, let's take a look at a situation when the ortho para substitution will be the one that predominates. So basically, the substituents that direct the ortho para pathway that produce the ortho para substituents tend to increase the stability of the intermediates and decrease the activation energy, so increase the rate of our reaction. So basically, let's suppose we have the following monosubstituted benzene in which our E1 group is this methoxy group. We have the oxygen and we have the oxygen attached to our carbon first position and this methyl group is attached to the oxygen from the other side. So let's suppose we mix in some arbitrary electrophile, let's call this electrophile E. 
and let's examine the three different pathways. So we're examining the meta substitution as well as the ortho and para. Now in the meta case, our electrophile E attaches to the third carbon as described in this diagram. So we produce the following molecule. So di substituted product, or in this case, at least an intermediate. The product will be formed when this atom is basically deprotonated, the carbon is deprotonated to reform the aromatic molecule. So notice that in this intermediate, we have resonance stabilization. So basically in this case, in this structure, the positive charge is on carbon two. Now, if this pi bond jumps onto here, then the positive charge will be delocalized onto the six carbon. And if our pi bond jumps here, our positive charge will be delocalized onto carbon number four. So we have the delocalization localization of the positive charge among three different carbon atoms. And at least from this perspective, this seems rather stabilizing. But to actually answer this question, whether this pathway will be the one that predominates, we have to examine the ortho and the para pathway. Now, ortho and para will produce the same type of result as we'll see in just a moment. So for the ortho case, our electrophile attaches to the second carbon. And so we have the E attached to the second carbon and the positive charge is on the third carbon. Now if this pi bond moves here, the charge moves on to this fifth carbon. If this pi bond moves here, the charge moves on to this carbon. Now notice, the third carbon is a tertiary carbon in a way because it is attached to three other groups. And not only that, but there is this oxygen atom that contains a lone pair of electrons, which it can basically donate to the empty orbital on this tertiary carbon that has a positive charge. And so that means we can form a pi bond and our charge is delocalized onto a four fourth atom, this oxygen atom. And the same exact thing is true in the para case. If our electrophile attached to this fourth position, we produce four resonance stabilized structures with our charge being delocalized also onto this oxygen atom. And so that means because we have four resonance structures versus three, this will produce a more stabilized intermediate carbocation that will be lower in energy than compared to this case. And not only that, the transition state of going from the reactant to the intermediate will be lower in energy and more stable. And so the activation energy for this reaction will be lower than the activation energy for the meta substitution. And so that means for this particular case, when our substituent basically contains an oxygen atom as shown that contains a lone pair of electrons, we see that ortho and para are the pathways that are predominant because that methoxy group, that oxygen, can basically donate that, those electrons to form our four resonance stabilized forms. So once again, the methoxy substituent contains a lone pair of electrons that can act to help delocalize that charge. If our electrophile adds to the meta position, we see that the charge is too far away and the oxygen cannot interact, so we cannot form the fourth resonance stabilized form. And so this will not predominate, but this will predominate to so the product, the para ortho product will predominate when our uh, substituent on the mono substituted benzene is this methoxy group. Now, let's examine a case 
where our substituent basically plays a role to cause the meta product to predominate over the orthopara. So let's suppose our mono substituted benzene molecule contains the following substituent. So we have a nitrogen atom that is attached to three methyl groups as shown. So it contains a constant positive charge, a permanent positive charge as shown. So in this case, we have the meta substitution pathway and to save space, I basically only showed the ortho substitution, but para is basically exactly the same. So in the meta case, once again, our E, the electrophile is attached to the third carbon. So our E is attached here in each case. In this case, the positive charge is on the second carbon. If this jumps here, it moves onto the sixth position. If this jumps here, it moves on to the fourth position. Now, what about the ortho case? In the ortho case, we have our E attached to the second carbon, and so we form a positive charge on the third carbon. If this migrates here, we form a charge on the fifth. If this migrates here, we form a charge on the first carbon. Now, notice that in this particular case, we have a positive charge on this carbon and a permanent positive charge on the carb on the atom right next to it the nitrogen atom and because these are two of the same type of charges they are like charges they will repel one another and so here we're going to have electrostatic repulsion as a result of these two positive charges being very close to one another but notice in this case the charges never actually appear a adjacent to one another. They're always at least one carbon atom away and that will be a relatively stabilizing effect. So we see that although both of these structures are not very stable because we have two charges on this molecule, two positive charges, this will be the more stable resonance stabilized intermediate than this. And so for this particular case, as a result of this substituent that carries a full positive charge, the meta substitution pathway will predominate over the ortho para substitution pathway. So generally speaking, we see that the meta substitution product predominates when our substituent contains an atom that has a positive charge, a full positive charge, or a partial positive charge. However, if our atom that is attached right next to the carbon, the first carbon, has a lone pair of electrons that it can use to basically delocalize charge and create a pi bond, if we have this case, then our ortho-para substitution reaction will predominate.